In this lecture, we will discuss about the concept of the activation record. Uh, suppose uh, we have uh, a function name as f u n c t i o n. The function is the is a function is a user defined function in which two parameters are passed as a and b, and uh, you are performing the addition of these two numbers. So you have taken local variable x and you have applied a formula x equals to a plus b, and this value x is returned. In the main, you have actually called this function. In the main, there are variables p, q, and z. The initialized value of p is 10 and q is 20. And then you have called this function to add the values of p and q. And uh, after uh, the function has finished and it has returned the sum of the two numbers, it is stored in z variable. And that z, then, then that z is printed by the printf function. Fine. So there is a function which is called. So whenever you call a function in the runtime, an activation record is prepared in the RAM. Fine. When you compile your program, when you execute a program and you pass the, some values to uh, the function, then uh, with those values, an activation record are prepared. You can say that for every function call, an activation record is prepared. So these, this activation record is stored in the memory or the RAM. Okay. Now what are the contents of that activation record or how that uh, activation record is helping us? Now suppose <clears throat> if this is a program, these are the instructions. Right? All these are the instructions. For this program, all these are the instructions. And if these are the instructions, obviously these instructions are going to be stored in the RAM. Right? These instructions are also going to be stored in the RAM. So suppose uh, the address at which this instruction goes is let's say 1000. Uh, let's say the address at which this statement goes, it is 1001. This at 1002 and this at 1003. Similarly, these instructions, let's say, are going at some 2000 location. 2001 location and 2002 location. So these statements are being stored in the RAM. And uh, the order of the execution of uh, these statements are like this. Here in the main, first this, this instruction is executed, then this instruction is executed, and then this ex instruction is executed. Since this instruction is a function call, after this you will not perform this 1003. You will jump to this function. Fine. So after the execution of the instruction at 1002, it will jump to here. Fine. And then this function will be, the instructions of this function will be executed. Again sequentially we will execute the instructions. This instruction, this instruction, and then this is in, this instruction. Since this, this instruction is a return, the, the control will return to the function call. Fine. After this, this 1003 will be executed. So the order of the execution is like this. Instruction number 1000, then at instruction 1001, 1002, after this 2000, and 2001, and 2002. And then again coming back to 1002, and then 1003. So this is the order of the execution. So how to ensure that this uh, this order is followed? We'll do that with the help of the activation record. So what happens when you call a function? Whenever you call a function on the stack region in the RAM, so this is a function call. These are the parameters with which you have called the function. Fine. These are the parameters at which you have, with which you have called the function. And you know that at 1002 location, this function has been called. So the very first thing is the return address. You should know that what is the return address. At which point you have to come back after the completing completion of the function. Now you should know what are the actual parameters. P and Q are the actual parameters. So what are the actual parameters which we have called the function? 
Now after this, a function is called, and when the function is called, the values of p and q are being saved in a and b variables, which are the new variables. So you should know what are the formal parameters. These are a and b are known as the formal parameters. Fine. And then in the function, in the definition of the function, you have taken a local variable. So you should store the space for the local variable also in this activation record. And then you are returning this x value. So return value, we should store the return value also in the activation record. So these are the five contents that we need to store in the activation records. First is the return address. Since we have called this function, we should know that at what point we have to come back. The actual parameters during the call of the function, p and q are the actual parameters, formal parameters in which parameters or in which arguments these values are actually taken, in which variables we have been taking, we are taking this space p and q. So a and b are the new variable in the function, a and b. And then x is the local variable, so we need to store this low in the local variable space. And what is the return value? When x is the x is getting returned, so x will have obviously will have some values. So, so we should know that what is the return value. In this function, it happens like the lo the uh, local variable declared is same as the values we are returning, but it will actually not be the same case always. We may be returning something else as well. So these are the parameters that we need to store in the activation record. Okay? So this is actually known as the parameters for activation record. Every time you call a function, all these values are stored in the activation records. Fine. Now what is the advantage of uh, storing this activation record? Let's say we are calling a recursive function. Fine. Let's say we are calling a recursive function. Let's say factorial is a recursive function. Let's define this factorial uh, function, which actually finds out the factorial of, let's say, n value. It returns integer value. So if n is 0, you are returning 1. Otherwise, you are calling this function return n into factorial n minus 1. Let's say there is a main. In the main, you have defined, let's say, n equals to 5, let's say, nf also, and you're calling this function factorial. So, f equals to factorial function with n value, and then you are printing this f, print f, percentile d, f. So, you're calling this uh, First time we are calling this function with 5, the value of n is 5. So if you say that uh, this is the activation record and uh, we have called a function for factorial 5. Let's say f5 is re representing the factorial 5 function call. Now if I say that uh, this is entirely is actually representing the activation record of factorial 5. And inside the factorial 5, you can see that factorial 4 will be called. Fine. So before uh, handing out the situation of the factorial 5 or the actual value which is to be returned in the factorial 5, we are calling the factorial 4. Factorial 5 is not resolved yet. So inside that we have called, let's say, the function factorial 4. So the activation record of factorial 4 will also be maintained here in this stack region. Okay. Now on the top we have factorial 4. Now inside factorial 4 we will call a factorial 3. So it is not resolved yet and we will store the activation record of factorial 3. And inside factorial 3 we will store the factorial, factorial 2. Inside factorial 2 we will call factorial 1. Inside factorial 1 we will call factorial 0. Now we know that the this is the base condition. The value of n is 0 and now we can return value 1 directly. 
So since we are returning the value directly, it means the activation record for factorial 0 will now be popped. There is no requirement of factorial 0's activation record now because we know that uh, if this function is complete, factorial 0 function is complete, it will return a value 1. But where to return this value? Obviously this factorial 0 was called from somewhere in factorial 1. So this will be returning the value 1 here. And now once we know the value of factorial 1, this is resolved. So we will pop this one and factorial 1 was called from factorial 2. So this value will be returned to factorial 2. So this activation record is popped. Similarly, factorial 2, we now have the factorial 2 value. This activation record will be popped and the value will be returned to 3. So after this, this F3 becomes active. Now after, if F3 becomes active, we now have factorial 3 value. This activation record will be popped and this value will be sent to factorial 4. Similarly, we know the factorial 4 value. This will be returned to factorial 5. And obviously, if we have the factorial 5 value, this activation record will also be popped and the control will shift to the main. Fine. So what is happening here that we are actually storing the activation records. We are pushing the activation record on the stack and it is helping us to resolve to which location we should return the value. So for every function call, we will maintain a activation record. And this activation record is maintained in a stack. Thank you.